Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Bye. Hello. We'll give everybody just one more minute to hop on before we get started. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for being here um, for our virtual YP peer panel. My name is Kelly Yeager. I am one of the member engagement consultants with LSCU, and I will be facilitating this evening's event. We're thrilled to have all of you here and look forward to an engaging and insightful discussion. Um, before we get started, I want to go over just a few housekeeping items. Um, just please keep your microphones muted unless you are speaking. Um, if you can, we would love for you to have your cameras on just to make it more engaging. Um, we know that some of you are on the road driving, so completely fine. Don't worry about it. But if you can, please have them on. Um, also, feel free to utilize the chat. We will be checking it um, for questions, comments about the discussion, and we may have a few gift certificates for um, active participation. So with that said, we will go ahead and get kicked off with what is a young professional? I'm sure most of you here know what a young professional is, um, but in case you don't, uh, as your trusted advocate for Alabama, Georgia, and Florida credit unions, we also focus on developing the next generation of credit union leaders. YPGs are made up of anyone under the age of 40, um, or we say young at heart. We are not going to check IDs at the door. We're not going to kick you out. Um, so really, everyone's welcome. Um, but we're really just looking for this group of individuals that uh, want to expand their knowledge and overall impact that we're making as uh, or in the credit union industry. Um, honestly, we are the credit union or credit union leaders of tomorrow. Um, it's now more important than ever that uh, as credit unions, we attract, retain, and develop the next generation of leadership so that our credit unions can continue to grow and thrive. Um, one of our favorite quotes here at LSCU is, leadership is an action, not a position. We are all still continuing to learn and grow in our careers. Um, regardless of what our role is in the credit union. So we all have the power to make a difference and spread the word. I would also encourage you, if you aren't already signed up on our website, lscu.coop, um, that's a great way to get plugged in and receive all of our communications about events that are going on. Uh, we offer these quarterly virtual free events um, like we're having tonight and also our annual YP Think Tank, which is also a free event. Um, and we do try to rotate that around to all three states. Um, I also encourage you to start attending chapter events or get plugged into your local YP groups. Um, I'm sure you are able to reach out to one of the board members on your local chapter, but if you're not sure who to contact or how to get plugged in, um, please reach out to one of us at LSCU because we would be happy to connect you with those individuals and get you plugged in. So with all of that, um, we are happy to introduce each of our panelists for tonight. Um, each of our panelists is a YP who has achieved remarkable success in their respective fields. I'll ask each panelist to briefly introduce themselves, sharing a little bit about their background and current role, as well as their journey into credit unions and what motivated you to join a credit union. So we will start with Sala. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sala. I work at USF Federal Credit Union, headquartered in Tampa Bay. 
go both. So that's the reason why I actually got into my credit union. I started at the university as a student. And one day I was walking around and I said, hmm, I think I should try to apply at the bank on campus. So that's where I went. And I applied for a teller position. And after my interview, I got started as a USR. After working in the retail department for a little while, I moved on to the records department to try to learn something different. And I wanted to see what back office was like. After that opportunity, I was able to move to the mortgage department in the post-closing area. So I learned QC and more back office stuff. And most recently, I've been promoted to a performance excellence specialist. So at my credit union, that's the project management department and the PMO, which is the project management office. And so it's been a very, it's been a very exciting seven-year journey. And I hope to continue achieving high heights and um, growing with my credit union. And I'm the president of the Tampa, the YPG Tampa Bay chapter. So I've been the president for the past couple of years, but I've been involved with the group for over about five, I would say. And I would say that YPG has a direct hand in motivating me, but um, also helping me network and get to the places I've been able to get to. Most recently, the Performance Excellence Department. So I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you, Sala. Angela, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, my name is Angela Smith. I'm the current president and CEO at Fort McClellan Credit Union. Um, my journey started in 2006, um, and I started out as a part-time teller with a um, institution at that time. It was Alabama Telco. Now it's Avadian Credit Union. And I have worked my way up throughout the years. I've held different roles within the organization. Um, all the way teller with MSR, I traveled, um, I was a branch manager, and then I took an administrative assistant or executive assistant role, um, accounting manager, VP of operations, COO, and then finally I've landed as CEO in 2021. Um, my journey started though with a simple manager that was working at Avadian, now Avadian. She gave me her business card and I was working retail. Um, so I helped her with jeans. And she, when she left, she gave me her business card and said, hey, if you're ever interested in a position, call me. So I contacted her and that's, that's history. So I stayed in the, the industry. Um, what motivates me and daily is really just what we do you know it's it's being authentic and helping people and really going through those different milestones that we all go through on it on now till you know i mean even death so that's my story ashe would you like to go yes ma'am can y'all hear me okay i want to make sure my Phone's working good. Are you able to hear me? Loud and good. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I want to first um, say thank you for tuning in. And it's honestly an honor to be on the panel with two amazing ladies that, that I had the pleasure of meeting in person not too long ago. Um, I currently hold a title clerk and loan processor position at GeoVista Credit Union here in Southeast Georgia. Um, to shine some light on my journey thus far, uh, though it's been a little shorter than uh, the other two ladies, but that's okay. <laughs> um, at 19 years old, um, my mother actually suggested me to reach out to the credit union for possible job opportunity. Um, I was just, you know, starting my career outside of high school, and um, I decided to apply with um, her words of encouragement. Um, so it was a member service representative position that I applied for, um, applying with no financial work experience. Um, I did not get a job initially. But um, to our surprise, another position did open up um, simultaneously and GeoVista did see something in me and reached back out to me and offered me the position. So I greatly appreciate my credit union for supporting me and seeing something in me so early on at 19 years old. 
Um, so now three and a half years go by and I'm in front of you here today as a fellow passionate YP. Um, and like stated, I now work in the loan department. It's been such an enlightening journey thus far. Um, and I'm excited to see where I am to go along with all of you during this journey. Thank you so much. And again, we're so glad to have all three of you as our panelists tonight. Um, so the next question I want to ask you is, can you share any specific training or resources that have significantly contributed to your professional growth? Um, Angela, if you want to go first. That one's a hard one because there really isn't me personally. Um, formal training, I do not have. <laughs> so it's possible for everyone to succeed without formal training. But what I will say is that the resources, um, the league has resources. HUNA has resources for you to gain knowledge on. Um, it is any anybody that you work with or engage with that can offer you nuggets of knowledge. Um, you take those nuggets of knowledge and you create them and mold them for for your benefit. Um, and that's what I can say, you know, over the years, um, that's what I've done. I've took those opportunities that I was given, um, whether it was networking outside, learning from each other, um, going through those roles and taking on any kind of initiative, right, that I was given. Um, a lot of times I've learned by fire, trial by fire. That's what you do. But you get in there and then that's the that's when you research and then you really kind of hold it near and dear to your heart when you kind of learned um, through the process. Um, but as far as resources and training, um, you know, CUNA has always been a really good avenue and also the league and those webinars that you can do. So that's what I would say. Um, a lot of times trial and error is the best way to learn. And also, I'm so glad I'm not the only one that may call it CUNA forever. I cannot get no, used forever. to America's credit unions. <laughs> no, it, I don't know if I can do that either. <laughs> Thank you. Sasha, do you want to go? Yes, I call it CUNA too, guys. <laughs> um but yeah, um, I wanted to um, mention the internal training that my credit union um, has granted with me with, as well as um, allowing me to participate in opportunities outside of my day-to-day -day normal job duties, right? So saying yes to things that normally say no to. One day I walk in and they're like, have you been on TV before? And I'm like, no, but I can. <laughs> so um, thanks to the credit union, I was a part of our very first um, TV commercial, which was very exciting. Um, it was a back to school segment, um, of course, share, uh, spreading credit union awareness. Um, so those two things uh, personally have um, significantly contributed to my growth and development um, at my current um, credit union. Um, as well as to um, mention uh, CUNA, the CPD uh, online courses and certifications. Those are very resourceful to me as well. But also the resources that the league has um, provided us thus far. I attended my very first QC um, back in June, and um, it was a great networking opportunity. Um, it allowed me to, like stated before, meet um, our panelists here, as well as a few of those that are watching. So those are the resources that have significantly contributed to my development. Thank you so much. Sala, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I can add on to that. First, I want to say, Sashay, I love that you were on TV. That's fabulous. But I have three. So there were, uh, it's basically a summary of what our other two panelists said. So having those uh, resources from the league, having resources from CUNA, AC, whoever, um, but also having internal resources. My credit union is really big on training and development. And through our internal platforms, you, you know how we all have those regulatory classes that we have to take every year to stay in compliance. So our credit union has a bunch of additional electives that you can take, um, things that are specific to your job role, things that are specific to other job roles. So that aids in training and development if you're looking to learn about other opportunities in the credit union, other paths. 
Um, but I would also say the people, the people were my norm, my number one resource. When I started at the credit union, I would go to my manager for everything and they were always welcoming and ready to listen and ready to help. And I think that credit unions are there. We have a more family feel They're They're usually not as large as other corporations, other banks or financial institutions. Most of the time, you know, most of the employees. So, um, Luckily for me, I was able to ask anyone a question and they'd be able to provide an answer. Now, that answer wasn't always documented in a procedure or a policy. And we have we've grown leaps and bounds from the time I started seven years ago to now to document those answers that we have and resources that we have for each other. But just being able to go to someone um, send them a Teams message, hop on a call or walk up to them in the office and say, hey, can I borrow your expertise? That's the biggest resource for me. But I will second that I enjoy going to conferences and getting that um, external education, because if if you're not able to attend events like that, I went to the advocacy conference in January. It was eye opening. It was eye opening. I got to see firsthand what it's like to talk to our legislators about issues that affect credit unions. And I wouldn't have I wouldn't have caught the bug if I hadn't have gone in person. Um, going to SQC, that was my first SQC ever. So I really enjoyed that as well, getting to network with some of the other YPs, but also reinforcing connections that I already had, learning from people that I didn't know. So there's just a lot that you can learn if you step outside your normal day to day. And I'm lucky to have the leadership that allows me to do so. Thank you so I much. would even say, you know, when you, when you ask those questions of why, so a lot of people will, I know over my years, there's been a lot of different managers who didn't necessarily love that question because it was that you were, they thought that you were questioning them. You're not questioning them when you ask why. Um, for myself, it's really just about learning. Like if I understand the why of why we do it, what's going on, what does it cause, all of those things, um, that's really um, a learning and growing experience. So ask those why questions. I totally questions. agree with you. Because you're not really questioning the person, you're questioning the process, you know, and sometimes right. people have to get away from that stigma. So I'm lucky to have the leadership that I've had, but I, don't get me wrong, I've run into a couple of roadblocks when it comes to communicating. But overall, I would say I have a pretty good group, so I'm lucky for to have those managers. Great answers, ladies. And I definitely appreciate other people that ask questions. Um, I am a question asker and always want to know why we do what we do and see the full circle. Poor Alicia probably gets tired of my questions, but it's okay. I'm still going to ask questions. Never, Kelly. Never. <laughs> okay. So next question. What is one trait that sets an aspiring young professional apart as a future leader of our industry? Sasha, would you like to answer this one first? Oh, oh yes. Um, this was actually one of my favorite questions to um, sit and think about. So there's like a number of traits we can all think about, right? Um, but one that stood out to me is humility. Um, we tend to be very shy or um uh, or intimidated by things right but embracing this trait not, not only shows yourself but your team that you know you don't have the answers at all the times or the confidence um at all times and that your team and your department their input is just as essential and valuable um so this fosters a culture of innovation um support and shows everybody that learning and developing is in our endless efforts. Um, so I would definitely say that it is a trait. Um, this would that will make a YP um, not only be just a future leader, but an exceptional leader at that in the future. Thank you, Sala, Angela. If y'all want to add anything to that, feel free. Yeah, I could go if you like. So my trait would be passion. I'm very passionate when it comes to the mentorship and development of young professionals, because that's what I've experienced. So it kind of just trickles down. But if you're passionate about something, people can see it no matter what it is. If you're passionate about music, if you're passionate about animals, if you're passionate about your family, gardening, the fruits of your labor will show. Um, so having that passion is key. And not everyone is passionate about 
this industry. So if you're a young professional coming in, you're asking questions, you're showing interest, like um, the other two panelists said, not saying no to opportunities, showing that you really want to be there, that'll have leadership, especially senior leadership even, because again, credit unions typically um, have, they're more interconnected. So it's easier for you to shine when it comes to your senior leaders all the way at the top of the C-suite. So that's how I've gotten um, a lot of my opportunities by being passionate and speaking up. And sometimes that's very hard to do, especially if you're new to the credit union industry or any kind of corporate industry, because kind of like, mm, maybe I shouldn't say this, or maybe it's not my place to speak up, but I would say, go for it. Um, and go for it immediately. If you think about it and you feel like this opportunity is something you'd like to at least learn about, there's no harm in speaking up. And once you continue doing that and people see that you're interested and that you have some energy around what you're trying to accomplish, those doors will open up. So I think that separates a lot of um, eager young professionals from those who um, aren't maybe as visible, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would say inquisitive. Right. We've talked a lot about asking those why questions. We've talked a lot about just taking the initiative and not being afraid. Um, with that, though, comes vulnerability, right, because we're not going to know everything. And so you as a YP have to be OK with being vulnerable and OK with failing because it's going to happen, um, you know. So that would be what I would say. I love someone who asks the questions. I love someone who takes the initiative. And even if they fail, I, we know we're, we're a team. So we're going to be right there to pick up everybody and we're going to make it. We're going to say, okay, well, what happened? Let's figure out how we can succeed from that point forward. So as a YP, you try to come in and sometimes try to prove yourself, right? Um, because you think, well, I, I'm young. I don't know as much as others. But you can learn. Everybody can learn. We learn. We learn forever. So don't be afraid to fail. Ask the questions and be take the initiative, take the initiative to find what Paula said, your passion. Great answers, ladies. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, what challenges or difficult situations have you faced as a YP in this industry and how did you overcome them? Sala, if you want to start off with this one. There have been a couple. I think that the biggest challenge I have faced is um, imposter syndrome, thinking that I'm not good enough or I shouldn't be in the room or I shouldn't be the person that this expert came to with a question. Um, I shouldn't have gotten this opportunity. So that has that's been my biggest internal challenge. How I overcame that feeling was looking at the successes and celebrating even the smallest of wins. So, for example, when I was in the mortgage lending department, I worked in QC, QCing files, auditing files, things like that. And um, I was actually, I was decent. I was not that bad. <laughs> we didn't have many compliance errors. And so um, I just, one day I just thought about it. I'm like, I don't know why I'm down on myself about the fact that my manager is coming to me and saying, hey, you didn't have any, you had maybe one compliance audit and it it would have been, you know, within the past 30 days or so. I'm like, well, I shouldn't have had that. I shouldn't have had that error. I'm not doing good enough at my job. I'm not doing well. But that's that's one error in the past 30 days. And if you look at the past six months, we've had none. You know, so looking at those wins and saying, you know what, I am actually doing a good job was very helpful. Also recognition from peers. Our credit union is huge on internal recognition. So we always try to shout each other out when we do a good job. Um, so that helps a lot. Again, the people really make a difference. So having team members that lift your spirits and speak life into you is very, very important. And I would also say my family. So my fiance, soon to be husband, he's actually, he's one of my biggest supporters. He's my biggest supporter. And if I was ever down or thinking, okay, we have to put on this YPG event and hopefully it goes well, I'm panicking. I'm like, I'm not sure. The panelists are great. The venue secured, but you know, am I going to do a good job bringing this message to the forefront? He would always say, have you done it before? I would say, yes. Did it go well? Yes. And then he'd say, so what are we talking about? 
<laughs> so he was one of the biggest, um, he was one of the biggest solutions to that imposter syndrome. But the, I think the biggest thing that helped me get over that was having my daughter, Zuri. She's my everything. I love that baby more than words can describe. And when I had my child, it helped, she helped me realize that, you know, I have a little person looking up to me and what am I going to tell her about the things that I've done or how I've lived my life? You know, I'm just a, just a girl in Tampa working at a credit union, heading up this YP group, or am I going to tell her, you know, mommy worked really, really hard when she was in school. She was a waitress for um, quite a few years. She worked three jobs at a time to put herself through school. Then she got this opportunity to work at the credit union and she stayed there for X amount of years. And, you know, she accomplished this and learned about this and gave back here. And, you know, so that also helped me. Zuri was the biggest, biggest change for me. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to go out there and have a kid <laughs> in order to get over any imposter syndrome or make yourself feel better. But just if you find that person in your life, that you can, uh, that, you know, you can be an example for. So before Zuri, it was my little brother. Cause it's just the two of us, you know, just giving, just knowing that you're doing something good in the world, that you're working hard, that you're improving, you're doing something you're not doing, you're not doing nothing. That was the biggest motivator for me. So sorry, that was a lot, but. I don't apologize. That's awesome. Angela. Um... Yeah, I, I would definitely say imposter syndrome. I mean, for me as well, Paula, that's that's a challenge. Um, being young and being an executive is a challenge, right? Um, but imposter syndrome over the years, um, it just kind of goes along with what we've been talking about. Being taking the initiative and not being um, afraid to to fail. So when I was offered and asked, I was asked, I was approached. I didn't apply for this. But I was approached and was like, hey, you know, what do you think about being the accounting manager? Um, well, I don't know anything about accounting. What are you talking about? So, you know, taking that lead and taking that leap of faith and just kind of diving deep into it, trusting that person that, you know, thought highly enough of me and the abilities to be able to take that role and you you got to you got to take that leap of faith sometimes, and but that is going back and being like, well, I don't have the formal education, right? I don't, I've never done that. Uh, that's not anything that I've wanted to do. Um, I've never really thought about that kind of being the career path that I wanted to take. Um, so imposter syndrome can get anybody at any time, and it's it is a challenge, but you just overcome that overcome that by just continuing on forward, moving forward with it, trusting in the process, right? Uh, we are a process and we're a work in process. So that's, you have to trust in yourself and you'll get there. Um, and then just go back and recognize all of those wins. I've seen a lot of in the chat, you know, celebrate your own wins. Yes. Think back of those, those times. And then you can kind of overcome that impossible. Thank you. Sashay, do you have any comments to add? I sure do. Um, I do appreciate the other two um, elaborating on um, that specific challenge. I know I personally am still working on overcoming that. Um, being a perfectionist, uh, friends in my family get it from my mama. <laughs> so we're both working on that. But to mention um, another um, challenge that we face as young professionals, I don't hold currently in an executive position. However, me only being 22 right now, I have a lot of people that stereotype me, um, just like possibly people have done to you um, or being underestimated. And this question, um, um, I was able to actually come across something off LinkedIn today by an entrepreneur with the name of Miss Helen Day. And I'm currently looking down at my notes because I wanted to make sure I um, mentioned this to y'all because it rings so true. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to do things to reverse this or do something about this as YPs. So Miss Helen Day um, kind of elaborated on the idea and philosophy of the frequency illusion where whatever the thinker thinks, the prover proves. So when we think about something or something comes to our attention kind of one time, 
our brain tends to recognize it and hold on to it. And then we tend to see it more often or um, acknowledge it um, clearer than before. So us being young professionals, we tend to come across things like, oh, those that are millennials or Generation Zs, we tend to be entitled or work shy, which obviously those people are not in here, are they? Um, so to overcome this, of course, we have to to break those stereotypes. We are unfortunately all guilty of it, but we need to kind of look at each other and at ourselves of the good that we are modeling or working towards, right? So people are able to start recognizing that more than those that, you know, unfortunately are entitled or work shy. So um, that's definitely a challenge that we face as YPs, but again, keep working hard, uh, keep that good work ethic, uh, model what you want those around you to do um, to overcome that. Oops, I apologize. That's my block, but that's my response. Love it. Okay, Angela, we will start with you for the next question. What strategies do you use to maintain a healthy work-life balance? Do you feel me breathe in and breathe out? Because that's a hard one. <laughs> That one is um, you do the best that you can, right? Um, you try to find that good balance in between. Um, currently, I'm on vacation. I've got family. We've got someone taking a nap back here. I've got my son that's um, up there in the bunk, that bunkhouse. And you just take every opportunity that you can in order to enjoy. You got to enjoy life. Um, you do have to work. Um, you you have to, us mothers, you have to mother, you have to wife, we have to be friends, you know? So there's more than just work and life to balance. You you have to find it and there is no answer for, for anybody. I can't give an answer for you on that one. That's one of those that is a trial. You have to, you just have to do and you have to do your best because um, we're all pulled in so many different ways and so many different directions. But just remember that, you know, it's okay to put work down. Um, if you have been able to build a team around you, that's really the most important is to have your support team, um, not only at home, but at work as well. So you can just put it down for a moment. Um I know personally, as far as the team that we have at Fort McClellan, it is, it's, it's come through some moments. We've gone through some changes. We've gone through some challenges just as an institution and as an organization and as a leadership team. And, you know, we, we've been able to find finally this year and even maybe the end of last year, you know, really I have been able to find a true work life balance. Um, but that didn't come easy. Um, and it still has its hard times, um, but a support team and people that are authentic for you and really want you to be successful and truly believe that success, that's who you want to surround yourself with. Yes, and just a disclaimer here, we did not force Angela to get, do this on her vacation. She did it so graciously. <laughs> Thank you again, Angela. Um, I did. <laughs> Sasha, do you have anything to add? Yes. Um, so to remain truthful, because there's quite a few people on here that know me personally, um, I have many work obligations. Um, I have two other work obligations outside of the credit union, as well as I am in school. So um, I am still learning that. Um, as of right now, I don't have kids. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have, you know, spouse, things like that. So, you know, right now I'm developing myself and things of that sort. But there are many times where um, we have meltdowns and that's okay. <laughs> um, that's how I personally, you know, currently am trying to... Um, Correct, because obviously, you know, when you get overwhelmed and overstimulated, there's things that, you know, can happen or can affect others, and you don't want that to happen. So I have many people tell me, you know, Sashay, slow down. 
And, you know, as a young professional, especially in our generations, uh, most of our households, you know, we kind of grew up with, you know, if you're not productive, then what are you doing? You know, if you're just, you know, having a day off or sitting around, you're not being productive and that's not true. So um, every day it's a work in progress for me to embrace that, that taking a day off and slowing down is still productive um, because of course, if you're fully charged, then you're able to perform at your full potential. But if you're, you know, overstimulated and you're too hard on yourself, like we mentioned earlier, it can be very draining and then affect, you know, your work as well as like your members. So um, to be all in true, I'm still working on it, still working in progress. Um, and just Angela um, highlighting her experience with navigating that, you know, that makes me feel better too, because we all, I feel, are hard on ourselves the most. So um, like today, for example, I took off this evening for my other work obligation and it feels amazing. So um, thank you for that question. That was a good question. And it's okay to say no. It's okay to say I can't right now or, you know, be aware of burnout, right? It, it, it is a thing and it's okay to kind of be like, uh, I can't take that obligation now, but what I can do is this or I can get to it at that point. So don't be afraid. Points, boundaries. I'm learning those myself. Sala. Yeah, likewise, having boundaries is really important. And I still struggle with um, work-life balance, but not as much. And that's for two reasons. Number one, work from home. Let me tell you something, okay? The fact that I can work from home is a blessing. And if I don't have to go back, if my if my manager watches this recording later, if we don't have to go back, please don't make me go back. I love the option to work from home. I do go into the office. So like a hybrid kind of role, we go in to have team meetings or to do celebrations sometimes that my department puts on. And I do like that. It's good to have um, days office where I can be around like-minded professionals. I can be around adults and not just the baby and have those grown-up conversations and also get some effective work done. So I do like going into the office, but it is very nice to be able to work from home, to be able to go make your coffee how you like to make your coffee and um, come sit down in something comfortable and get to work. It's, you know, if you wanted to do something on your lunch break, uh, run an errand, it's a lot easier to do that from home than to do that from the office. So that has contributed to my work-life balance immensely. I started working from home about four years ago. And like I said, if I don't have to go back, I'm, they're not dragging me back. But the other thing that really helps is take that PTO. It's like Angela and Sashay said, there's a lot to do. I'm sure you guys all have a lot to do as well. And I really used to get bogged down um, in the fact that I had so many tasks. And then I would enter panic mode, like, well, if I could just go a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. And it's not that anyone was pressing me to do it. I was pressing myself to do it because I just wanted to, I wanted to get that work done. I wanted to be responsible for it. But guess what? If I log on tomorrow at eight o'clock, that task that I didn't complete at, you know, whatever time last night, it's still waiting for me. So instead of having a good night's rest and being able to tackle that in the morning, I'm more stressed out because I pushed myself too far when I was still going to have to deal with it the next day. So I stopped doing that and I started taking my PTO. Um, if I had uh, days available and you know what? I really needed a mental health day. I really just needed time to reset and regroup. I took that and I would come back so much better. I know that everyone doesn't have that opportunity. So if you do have the opportunity, use your sick time, use your vacation time, because that's what it's for. That was not a dig at you, Angela. I will be on vacation next week. So I completely understand. But if you have the opportunity, take that time and give it back to yourself. Because the other thing is, if for any reason you were to leave your credit union voluntary voluntarily or involuntarily they would they would fill that position because the organization still has to run you can't replace you you can't replace time with your family you can't replace you know going to let's say your favorite concert like seeing your favorite singer at a concert you can't replace those experiences or those moments but work will always be here so it's it's really a struggle 
to kind of get into that mindset, but I work on it every day. And again, Zuri helps. I want to watch her grow up. So you know what? If there's some things that have to wait so that I can take her to the zoo, it's going to have to wait. Or, you know, if, if there's, if I really need to take a break or if I have a doctor's appointment, I'm not going to feel guilty about that any longer. So that mental shift has really, really helped me with my work-life balance. But again, work from home, huge, huge, huge advocate. And if your credit union is not allowing you to work from home, let's get some discussions going so we can see if we can get that happening. Because I guarantee you guys will all be a lot happier if you could. Great insights, ladies. I know I'm learning so much. I hope the rest of you are too. Working from home for me, though, I always, um, I feel like I work longer hours because I'm like, oh, it's just right down the hall. Oh, it's just a little time. I just need to do this. It'll take me 30 minutes. Um, so just, just know, I love that, Sal. I love that you love to work from home, but it's okay not to <laughs> love that. It, I had, yeah, I had too yeah. many distractions. I had, you know, you had the dogs that were barking. COVID mm -hmm. scarred me for life. We had kids that mm -hmm. were home all day. We had dogs that was barking. You had things that were coming inside and outside, and you had to still maintain that. Well, you know, your day to day job. Right. Um, but I did. That one was a time, um, a period during my career that I felt like I worked probably from five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, all the way till the night time, eight, nine o'clock, you know, because I was like, I just, just, just this once, just this. So yes, take PTO, take the rest. You'll be fine. This is just an hour. It's fine. <laughs> I agree with you because you have the opportunity to work from home sometimes. And then also going from maybe a um, hourly role to a salary salaried role where there is not as many constraints on clocking in, clocking out. It's just, you know, get the job done whenever you can get the job done when it's best for you. Those come with, that's a different playbook. Like you have to kind of learn how you like to do things and reset, reorganize. So I agree with you. Um, but one thing I learned, and it was actually at the SCUSI conference, I learned this. Someone sets alarms on their phone. Um, and when it hits that hour, six o'clock or whatnot, it'll say stop work. And no matter what they're doing, no matter how important it is, they're going to close that laptop. Now in your role, you may not have that luxury. Um, but that person did. So I think that's also a good rule of thumb. If you find yourself just like constantly going, going, close the laptop or blacken the screens, go outside. I have a bird feed, a bird feeder right here on my back porch. And whenever I go on a break, I go outside and I sit there and I watch my birds and I just relax, just like, just disassociate from what you're doing for just for a second. But that's easier said than done. And it's, it's a constant practice for me. Completely agree. Um, what advice would you give to YPs as they navigate their careers, regardless of where they are currently in their career? Um, Sasha, we'll start with you. Yep. So, um, again, I've only been in the industry for three and a half years. Um, I have many things to still learn many experiences to still, you know, soak in and learn from. But there has been something that I have learned thus far that I feel is important for all of us to think about. Um, so my favorite wor word, and it's actually on my desk, is ambition. Ambition is what drives us all, no matter what we're doing, no matter where we're going, uh, whether you choose to still stay in the credit union field or you know, we you have the passion, which obviously those that are here today, we do. But fuel your own passion uh, admission with the power of listening with a purpose. Us as young professionals, again, we want to embrace that humility trait that we all, you know, have and learn from those that um, are currently mentoring us, um, those that came before us. There is wisdom there and there's always basics that will never, you know, fade or go away. Um, so I believe education never dies and past experiences from others will always bring truth, even though the days that we are experiencing are moving forward and we're never giving them back again. Um, those past experiences will always teach us something and it will still bring truth to a current situation or problem that we are facing or trying to solve. 
Um, so I feel that no matter where we are going, um, each to, to its own, um, our curiosity and our ambition shall follow. that. Sala, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, I would recommend no matter where you are in your career, don't give up. Um, because I've actually received a lot of feedback from young professionals that they feel like their careers are stagnant or um, that they're not getting the promotions that they'd like to have. And I understand that because I've been in my credit union for seven years. Um, and there were times where I felt like, oh, maybe I should try to go for this role or maybe I should go for that role. Again, imposter syndrome stopped me from going for a couple of opportunities. But there are times when I did go for opportunities and I didn't get them because there was someone with more experience or someone was a better fit for the role. So if something like that happens, I didn't take it as a learning opportunity at first. I certainly did not. I was like, oh, well, you know, I understand they got it as more, they had more experience, but I think I could have done a pretty good job. Maybe I should explore my options somewhere else. And again, nothing against my credit union. Very happy there. I enjoy the team. I enjoy the people that I've worked with for years. Um, but in those earlier years, especially as someone who was currently in school, currently in college to get a degree, like, well, you know, maybe you don't stay at this job. You go, you bounce around and see what else is out there because you've had a couple years experience. Now go see what else is out there. Um, but it was the people that brought me back in the culture. So it's like, you know what, I'll stay where I'm at. And then I'll just try to soak up what I can from the department that I'm in or the role that I'm in. And that actually helped me a lot because when I went from being a USR to our back office records department, because I wanted to try something where I didn't have to be member facing. There was a lot of stuff that had to do with member facing and retail that was going on behind the scenes that otherwise I, I wouldn't have I would have known how to handle or improve. Those improvements that I made in that department led me to the mortgage department, which was a promotion. Um, and because I was in records and I was like, oh, well, you know, I think I've learned what I'd like to learn here. Maybe it's time to move on. And again, someone like Angela said, recommended me for that position and it came to me. So, and that was because of the work I had done and improvements I had made, but that was from knowledge from my previous department. So I did the same thing in the mortgage department. Um, and that was my longest stay in the credit union. I stayed there longer than the other two roles. Um, and although I enjoyed it, I felt like I was ready to move on. I was ready to try something different, soak up some other knowledge. Um, but instead of going to another credit union, I wanted to see what opportunities were within my credit union. And it led me to the promotion I have now, which is being a project manager for the whole credit union, not just a department, but we have our hands in projects for all the departments. And this is my passion. This is something I um, identified that I wanted to do maybe a couple of years ago. And I started seriously researching it last year um, and thought, you know what, if they ever open a position, I think that's something I would apply for. And I let my managers know um, in my current role that it's something I would go for because I always was candid with them about what my what my passions were. But I didn't give up on the departments I was in. And I didn't give up on staying at my credit union because I enjoyed growth there. I enjoyed other learning opportunities there, conferences and things with YPG that otherwise I don't know if I would have been allowed to have that same flexibility. Um, so I just stayed the course, but I didn't, I didn't stay the course quietly. If there was something that I wanted to change or something, um, that was detrimental to my, to my work-life balance or my role and responsibilities, I would speak up. I would say those things. Um, so I didn't give up on them and they didn't give up on me. And I think that's really important because a lot of YPs, we kind of feel like it's not moving fast enough. You know, especially if you're just entering the workforce like I did, I was like, this isn't really moving fast enough for me, um, but it was moving right on time. And if I knew then what I knew now, I would have been a lot more patient. Thankfully, I always handled it respectfully um, and was, you know, I was polite with managers when I when I had my one on ones and talked about what I wanted to do. I would never say, you know what? time's a ticking and where's that promotion I would never say anything like that um but I I think that I did say some things like oh I wish I was able to be in this role or that role and if I had known all of that experience would have led me to the passion I identified not too long ago I think I would have just stayed the course so I recommend that we all don't give up awesome thank you Angela anything to add yeah, I would say don't chase titles. 
and money chase passion and culture. So a lot of, a lot of times, um, you know, everybody's guilty of it. Well, I want the title or, you know, titles are important. Um, but really it's not, I promise chase passion and culture, a culture of an organization, no matter if it's credit union or anywhere else, the culture that is there will make you or it will break you. So it, you, you could be, you could leave someplace, you can go someplace and they could pay you, you know, $10,000, $15,000 more. But is it worth it? Sometimes it's not worth your mental help um, to make those moves, especially if it's in a bad culture. Um, don't be afraid, like Sala said. Like you said, you know, I've been turned down for multiple positions that I thought that that's where I wanted to go, right? I thought that's a really good stepping stone to get to, you know, your end game. Um, but sometimes we don't see the bigger picture. Um, so within the organization, um, so especially if you're applying for those promotions within the organization, your senior leaders or your executives, your managers may be privy to other things that they may not be able to share at that time, or they see you going into something different. Um, so I would definitely say chase passion and culture. Don't chase titles and money. Um and then make sure that when you do apply for those new roles, what you're doing is you're looking to see how does that, how does that fall within my plan um, to where I want to be? Where's my goal? What's my end game? Where does my passion lie? Make sure that your next steps are going to kind of fall within that. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to take this time and see, are there any questions that you ladies want to ask the audience? If not, that's okay. We can open it up to the audience for them to ask you questions. Oh, uh, I got one. Okay. <laughs> um, so I find that this question um, allows us to kind of revisit why we do what we do. Um, so I would like to know, um, what was a positive experience or comment a member or a fellow colleague vocalized to you that will last you for many years? And again, this is for anybody in the audience who wants to speak up and share. All right, well, I will have something to share. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Alicia. I serve as the Vice President of Member Engagement here at LSDU, and I have been creeping in the background of this Zoom so that we have our wonderful facilitator really taking the lead here, and kudos to Kelly for really making sure that this panel has ran smoothly and I have just been soaking all of this in and taking every single one of your answers to heart as well. And Sashay, to answer your question, one of the things that we did at the league here at our most recent leadership team meeting, we were asked to have a piece of paper and write our name on that piece of paper and tear it out of the notebook and that was it. And then all of a sudden we started passing around that piece of paper and you had about 30 seconds. So handwriting looked like scribbles in a couple of different places, but to write something positive about everything, everybody else on the team and what you see through them. and. You know, so many of the things that you all have hit on around making sure that we have work-life balance and chasing after what your passion is and knowing that you are in the right place, regardless of what the timing may feel like in your own mind at that point. The feedback that I received after really going through some difficult medical challenges this year, and I think it was Jessica in the chat who had put in Yes, take care of yourself or your body will force you to. A uh, prime example of that throughout th this year, and that could be a totally separate topic, but the thing that I took away from that was seeing how much, even if we are so bogged down with tasks, even if there is a lot on your plate individually, that you see those comments around being a ray of sunshine and being positive and the way that you can go about your tasks without having people 
know everything that's on your plate, whether that may be in your professional life or even in your personal life. So I would really encourage, you know, you can do the formal 360 feedback, but if there's ever an opportunity within your individual credit unions to solicit that feedback without having to, you know, awkwardly ask people like, huh, what's something that you really like about me? It was an exercise that I actually have it sitting right here next to me um, and have it something that I look at every single day. So just know as much as that feedback that helps each other, go out of your way to give your coworkers that same feedback too. So thank you for letting me share. And I'd love to hear anybody else who has had a, an impactful piece of feedback. We did have some good um, comments here in the comment section, so I'll share those that, that might not be able to read them right now. Um, Brian says, patience, because everything comes together um, to those who wait. Love that. Great comments. Ashley says, always find the answer to questions you are asked because it will come back around again. Don't just pass it off. The more you know, the more you grow. Love that. Really good comments. Um, also, um, Jessica shared, um, the most recent one, I was recognized by a coworker for supporting different departments and allowing them to use me as a resource when needed, which has helped their teams, teams feel so sorry, more comfortable when helping members, the imposter syndrome feeling dis uh, disappeared for a few days for sure. That's awesome. It's always good to hear some positive feedback. So that is it from the sh the chat box. I actually Thank have a question. For... Oh yeah, go ahead. I would like to know of all the people on the call, how many of you are involved in your local YPG groups? And if you're not. Hi everyone. Hi. So I Anna Sains, I'm with MPS Credit Union, and I have had the pleasure of being in the Young Professionals Group, which was first introduced to me when I went into the HR department. And we started a, a YEP group, which is the Young Emerging oh. Professionals. And that was really good because we did oh. do a couple of activities and we really had the hype going on. But then unfortunately COVID started and then everything just went left. So we have been struggling kind of to get the young professionals group up up and running. Uh, we had the participation of different credit unions at some point. And I now serve as a young professional on the southernmost chapter board. But we are definitely trying to kind of get that back up and going and to encourage that participation. So I'm really happy that you guys all did this event because I did share it with our team at the credit union. And I do see that Brian, which is part of the MPS credit union team, is on the call. Uh, so we are representing. So thank you again. That's awesome. I asked because... Um... That's what makes these events and everything worth it are the connections as well that you make. And so most of you are already connected. So thank you for sharing that. And you're already in leadership roles on your YP board. So that's important as well, because if you're not passionate about it, you can't really share the message to someone else. But I champion YPG as one of the main reasons that I was able to move further in my career. But not just that, I was able to enjoy it. Um, I'm still enjoying it because I get to have fun with like-minded professionals, but I also get to learn about credit unions that are in my community. So I don't work at Suncoast. I don't work at Grow or San Antonio Citizens or PESQ. Shout out to PESQ because I think someone's here from there. But um, hey, Delicia is on our board. And so I get to fellowship with her and talk to her about anything YP, YP related, but also personally. And um She's in a high level at her credit union, and I'm able to learn from her things that they do, um, leadership things that you're supposed to do. So it's it's really a great opportunity, not only to network, but to give something to someone else. I also saw that Jessica um, from Palm Beach is here. I owe you 
I definitely owe you some information. So I'm sorry about that, but I'll make sure to connect with you and email you. Um, a lot in Central Florida, like a lot of YP groups are working really, really hard to get active. And a lot of them are here in this chat. So I would really recommend you guys take the opportunity to at least add each other on LinkedIn so you can have conversations later. Um, but Jessica and I had a great conversation with people from my board and her board and talked about some plans and how we can um, take back best practices from each other. For example, she sends out an excellent newsletter to her YP group. It kind of encompasses everything that they've done, what they're up to, some fun facts. And that's something that we don't do. We send recaps, but they're not as good as hers. So I would highly recommend you guys take this opportunity to connect with each other and grow your network because that's also how opportunities and career development pops up for you. But that was my question. As the uh, old OP on the YP call, um, I echo that completely. Get involved with your YP group and your chapter is huge. It's going to help you professionally. It's going to help you personally. Uh, you make so many connections with other credit unions. And the beauty of being at a credit union is we, we're not scared to share information with each other. Um, being a part of a YP gave me connections at all the credit unions in my area. Being able to pick up the phone, shoot a text to somebody, give them a call, and get feedback on how they're doing a procedure, how they're doing something, it not only helps you, it helps your credit union, it helps your members. So definitely take advantage of that situation. Do not let that pass you by. Thank you all so much for sharing. Um, and now we'll open it up to the audience. If y'all have questions for our panelists, now is your time to ask those questions. Martha, you have a question? Do you, I want to start off by thanking each one of our panelists and the um, LSCU for putting this together because it's been extremely insightful. And so that goes along with my question, which is a lot of you guys are tenured in your careers. Some of you have three years of experience. I still think that that's, you know, a good amount of time. Um, but my question is if it's kind of more of a thought experiment. So let's say, you know, we have a time machine and present day Sala, present day Angela, present day Sasha has the capacity to travel back in time um, to meet that, that younger version of yourself who is about to embark on their first day in the credit union. What do you wish you could tell that younger version of yourself that you feel would have been very beneficial to know before you started? That made me a little emotional. That's a great I question. Know. <laughs> it's like, what, what would I tell little Sala? Um, but thank you for asking that because it allows me to self-reflect for a moment. I would tell myself to chill out. I was I was very nervous. Um, and I still get, especially when I have to speak to someone and um in a high power position or right before we're doing our YPG events. Like I, I get the shake sometimes. I have a lot of adrenaline pumping. I get really, really nervous. And so walking in on that first day, um, I was just like, oh my gosh, what am I getting into? Because again, I used to, I used to be a waitress. If anyone's from Tampa or Florida, I used to waitress in Ybor City. So that's, that's a completely <laughs> different atmosphere from the corporate world. I did have like a quick, um, a quick moment working for Capital One, but it wasn't, it wasn't like it is with the credit unions being in branch and everything. And it was a very short time. So I would tell myself, relax relax because it's not what you think it's going to be you don't have to be afraid you don't have to freak out you can just be yourself um and luckily I did kind of embrace that and the credit union embraced me but it took way too long because I was so so nervous um so just be authentic and chill out but thank you for asking that thank you for your response yes I would tell myself to continue to be authentic and true to yourself uh, and then remain genuine um, and things will work out. <laughs> I mean, that's 
that is genuinely what you kind of what I would tell myself um, looking back I mean I never would have thought that in 18 years you know I would be a CEO um, ultimately your you know your goal when you started out as a teller was like maybe you wanted to be a manager um, so then when I was a manager and was there for you know a little over 10 years doing that I was like, well, I don't know, maybe back office, right? So our goals change. Um, our passions can change. Um, our, as long as we're taking initiatives outside of our job description, right? There's a lot of things and a lot of times because you never know, you don't know the questions to ask. You don't know what you don't know. That's a saying. Uh, and you don't really know your questions to ask if you don't know what questions to ask. So getting involved in those things and not being afraid, um, being genuine and authentic to yourself. Love that. Thank you, Angela. Okay. Um, and that was a very good question. Um, does make me emotional too. Um, I put my paper down here. So again, I was 19 years old when I first started as a member service representative. Um, if I could go back, and these are words that, you know, my mentors and even my moms told me, but, you know, at a young age, sometimes it can be a little hard-headed or stubborn, but I would tell myself that, you know, you're going to have so many rewarding experiences to indulge in, but you're also going to come across challenging experiences to indulge in. Um, everything is going to teach you a lesson, no matter the size of that lesson, but it's going to be very significant to where you're going. And um, it's truly amazing that I'm actually here in front of y'all today. Um, back at 19, you couldn't tell me I'll be doing this <laughs> at all. Um, or even do the things that I've done alongside um, GeoVista Credit Union. Um, it's been a truly amazing experience and it's truly a rewarding um, job. Um, and to appreciate those around me and my team, appreciate my credit union and appreciate the members that support our credit union. Um, so those little words would have definitely uh, been beneficial to tell myself um, back at 19 years old. Thank you, Sasha, for that insight. Thank you to all the panelists for that insight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for that amazing question. Thank you for being here. <laughs> well, I know we are out of time. Um, and I want to be respectful, respectful of everyone's time. So I encourage you, if you do still have questions for our panelists, um, if you don't have their contact information, please reach out to me or any of us on the member engagement team. We will be happy to connect you with them um, and get your questions answered. Now, before I let you go, Susan, do we have gift card winners for this afternoon? Um, they will be receiving um, some Starbucks gift cards for our two winners, um, and we ch chose the winners. I hope you guys can hear me. My internet's a little wonky. Um, chose the winners by um, everyone who made comments got to be in a drawing, so I have chosen two. Um, so the first winner is Victoria Ogle, and the second is Jessica Baldwin. So congratulations, you two, and thanks, everyone, for such great comments on here. You guys were so active. You did a great job. So thanks, everyone. Yes, thank you all for your fantastic questions and active participation. Um, I do want to extend a special thank you to our panelists for sharing their time and insights with us. Um, your experiences and advice are invaluable to all of us. Um, and last, I just want again, to encourage you to stay connected. Um, if you're not plugged in to your local YP group or chapter, please, please get involved. I do not think you will regret it at all. Um, again, feel free to reach out to one of us if we can help you get plugged in. Um, and lastly, our YP Connect platform. 
This is a free platform for you to utilize. If you want to keep these conversations going, um, you can find that by going out to our website, lscu.coop. Click on the member engagement tab and click on young professionals and you will see it at the bottom. So again, thank you all for your time. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Hang on, thank I'm going to so interrupt much. you. Bye, everyone. Oh, Alex. No, I'm interrupting you. Hang on. Um, I just want to say all four of you ladies did an amazing job. I've been involved in quite a few panels, and this is by far one of the best ones I've ever been in. So I just wanted to tell you all that you did a great job, and I'm inspired by the YPs that we have leading the way. Second, third, fourth, and yeah. fifth, that one over here. Y'all did amazing. Thank you so much. I thank you guys for having us. Um, I'm always putting on events for YPG Tampa. So it is, it's very rewarding and a little strange to be on this side of the event, but I appreciate you having me and considering me. And I really enjoyed learning from Sasha and Angela as well. And all of you that joined us and took time out of your day to watch us. So we appreciate you. Thank you for having us. All right, Kelly, now I'll let you end it. Thank y'all. Have a great evening. Thank you, too. Thank you. See y'all again. Whether that be Good night, ladies. Or Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.